to Scrum. Scrum is um, the management framework that teams use. Hello? Hello? Yeah, go ahead. Yes, go ahead. Hello? Go ahead. Okay. It is the management framework that teams use to self-organize and work towards a common goal. Number two, it describes a set of meetings, tools, and rules for efficient project delivery. It can also be a framework for getting the work done with Agile methodology. It uses all core principles of Agile to define methods to facilitate a project. Basically, it is a platform for uh, where teams get uh, a project done, where it's an organized uh, platform where teams come together to get a project done. So what is an Agile methodology? It is a specific approach to planning, managing, and executing work. There are different types of Agile methodology. One of them is Chrome, which is the most popular. But we have uh, some other methodologies, which includes the Kaban, the software development, um, the Lean development, Scrum Ban, Nexus, among, or amongst others. So uh, we have the rule of the Scrum Master. Who is the Scrum Master? A Scrum Master is one, a facilitator for Agile development team. It coordinates the Agile development team on the uh, Jira platform. Two, it facilitates Scrum to the larger team by ensuring the Scrum framework is followed. It makes sure that the whole team follows the Agile methodology. Three, commitment to the Scrum methodology, Agile principles, and best practices. Make sure the team follows the best practices and uh, agile principles and they don't deviate from it while completing a project. Four, it's flexible and open to opportunities for the team to improve their workflow. The, the fact that you are a scrum master doesn't mean you are the boss. Amongst the team, no one is a boss, so you are always open to opportunities, suggestions from other members of the team to move the team forward and make the workflow move faster. So what do we mean by a scrum team? A scrum team is one, a small and nimble team dedicated to delivering committed product increment. It's a team where, uh, where teams come together to deliver a product, uh, to deliver a project to completion and it must lead to an increment. The project must um, bring about progress, it must bring about increment. Two so, is typically small. Most times a team is made up of 10 individuals, or it can be larger than that. And usually we have one screen, we have one scrum master, a product owner, and eight other development team members. It could be larger than that, but the the minimum should be 10 members which consists of one product owner one scrum master and each other development team members we have several ceremonies or events that we carry out on that scrum for you to say you practice scrum you must have gone through all these um, ceremonies one we have the um, sprint planning so we have the sprint backlog. Three, we have the daily scrum, and some other people call it daily stand up by the scrum team. Then we have sprint review, then sprint which would expect you. I'm going to uh, explain each one of it in details. So uh, in the scrum team, you usually have the product backlog, which is um, usually uh, given out by the product owner who knows who interacts with the um, customers, who knows the requirements of the project. And once the product backlog is submitted to the team, we go on to sprint planning. Sprint planning has a time box of um, 10 working days or two weeks. Some may even go on for a month, but uh, ideally it should be 10 working days or two weeks where you 
plan on water on uh, you bring out the spring from the product backlog what you want to work on then it moves to the uh, sprint backlog where you people deliberate that is what you people deliberate on when you have the uh, daily scrum the scrum team comes together and uh, discuss about the product backlog is like um, when there's a slabos then there's a slabos of a course then it's, it is divided into uh, semesters it's divided into sprint to to, to uh, make it sizable and make it uh, achievable it's broken down into sprints and the sprint could take um, 10 working days or two weeks or some a month the time box for sprint backlog no there's no time box for sprint backlog um daily scrum is uh, 15 minutes it must be a, it must be a 15 minute meeting every day where you could perform it's called daily standard or daily scrum the scrum master must make sure uh, under 15 minutes everything is uh, discussed and done and everybody going back to their work place. then we have a sprint review usually uh, a sprint review might take up to four hours where they discuss what have we done what is left to do are we making progress you know the team, the team will discuss about that and it usually brings about uh, increment then we talk about uh, sprint retrospective which usually takes the time box of uh, three hours where we come together and then discuss the the sprints we just finished what went well what didn't go well what do we need to add in the next sprint to make it better so that's basically the scrum ceremonies so we have it all here we have um, the key the scrum team rules are the ones in green we have the artifacts which are, which are in red the product backlog sprint backlog the increment to review must bring about increment and then we have the major events in blue the ones i just explained each one of them then who is a product owner a product owner is a project key stakeholder like i said earlier is the one that knows is the one that interacts most times interact with the users he has the requirement of the business he knows what uh, the uh, product is all about so it's a project key stakeholder typically someone from the marketing or product management or a lead user of the system they have a deep understanding of the users the marketplace competitors and trends so what do we mean by spring sprints are time boxed period of one week to one month uh, during which a product owner scrum master scrum team work to complete a specific product addition during the sprint work is done to create new features based on the user stories and backlogs uh, i explained that when i just explained the ceremonies uh, in scrum then we have the backlog what are backlogs backlogs are a list of issues describing what your team is going to do on a project it is a convenient place for creating storing and managing several kinds of issues one currently working on three you can also see them on the board here on the jira board and in the current sprint if you are using a scrum project which is referring to the jira board which is uh, the tool used in uh, scrum we have bugs. What are bugs? They are specialized bug tracking system that helps teams find, track, and report bugs in their software. The Jira system also helps teams assign bugs to appropriate team members at the right time, which, uh, which serves as a check for them if uh, they are actually meeting up with the uh, requirement of the project, if they are uh, working according to time bugs allotted to them yeah and it also gives the team a single view of item in the backlog whether it's a bug or it adds related to a new feature of development what are user stories user stories are part of the agile project man management methodology 
uh, a good Jira sto user story will help the development team to determine what they are working on, why they are working on it, and what value this will create. So, written from the perspective of the end users, user stories are written from the requirements of the end users, of the customers. It reflects the needs and wants of the individual system user, internal team members, or customers, and show how the requested functionality will deliver value to the end users. Anyone in the business should be able to read the story and understand what it means so at a glance anyone who is a scrum master or part of a team once the person reads the user story will be able to understand what the business is all about or what product you are working on and what value it will create just at the glance of a user story in jira stories go on to become issues which a project which are project building blocks that represent both stacks and stories. So user stories um, develop using this uh, table. There is an initiative. Then from the initiative, you create epic one, epic two, epic three. You can go on to uh, uh, several numbers of epics. It depends on how big the initiative is. So epics are a big chunk of um, work big chunk of stories and they are further broken down into story user stories and the user stories are further broken down into tags and sub tags so they are being worked on we have the jira scrum board what is a jira scrum board is a tool that unites team around a single goal and promotes iterative incremental delivery Then we have story points. What are story points? They are units of measure expressing an estimate of the overall effort required to fully implement a product backlog item or any other piece of work. Teams assign user story points. They assign story points relative to work complexity, the amount of work, risk, and uh, uncertainty involved in the task. Usually, two story points, for example, equates to a work that will take two to four hours to complete, whereas three story points go to issues that will take four to eight hours respectively. So that is how story points are, are awarded. It depends on the number of hours it will take to complete a particular task. Thank you. Hello? Hello. Very good. Okay. Okay. So you said I should um, I should liaise with answer and um, I should get story point from what is working on. So I did that. So I want to share. Yeah. I want to share my screen. It's all done, it's loading. Yeah, I think uh, we don't see the other screen, only the PPT. Can you see the screen? No, no, only the PowerPoint or Scrum. I mean, okay, let me, let me do that. Share my screen. Okay. Can you see it now? Hello, can you see yeah, it now? See okay, all right. So uh, I discussed with uh, Ansel and um, I created a Jira board for writech.com, which is here. Then from what is working on, I, I brought out epics, with, uh, which are a big chunk of uh, work. And my epics are... Uh, one, create microservice using Spring Boot 3. Epic 2, refining microservice architecture. 3, testing web APIs and endpoints. 
So from uh, Epic One, I created Square Sprint. Sprint One, under Sprint One, I have defining micro. So uh, under uh, uh, microservice, what are the stories you have? Yes, I'm trying to bring up the stories. Okay, under the first uh, epic, developing the Spring Boot, I have um, the stories set up a uh, development environment. Why is this thing not bringing out the full disorder? Oh, you should show me as a stories which belong to that particular epic. Yeah, I'm trying to. Okay, yeah. Under this a, epic create a micro service. Yeah. Yes, using Spring Boot 3, I have a set up development environment as Spring 1. Uh, and I also have uh, installed latest version of Java and uh, Spring Boot mm -hmm. on the, the Epic. And I gave it two to three points because it should take um, no more than two to four hours. And I has assigned them to myself. Okay. And I've started the sprint. Started on 22nd March and it's supposed to end by 5th April. So for the second uh, sprint, defining microservice architecture, I have installed okay. I have installed open APIs, I have created microservices, create a new Spring Boot project for each microservice. Create a new Spring Boot project is repeating, right? That is there in the create microservice yes. last epic also. Yes. Okay. So uh, first, let me on the defining the microservice application, right? So epic okay. is a mini project or feature in itself. So, if you look at this, uh, you know, what you have created here, create microservice using Spring Boot. This definitely is not an epic. Defining mm -hmm. microservice architecture, that is also not an epic. Okay. So, what is the definition of an epic? What is your understanding? Is, what is epic? Is it is a big chunk of work? A um, big chunk of work? Hmm. Uh, what work on? So the uh, PPT which you uh, showed me, presentation, can you go to that and show me what is the definition of EPIC you have? Okay. You have to understand the EPIC story from a very broader point of view so that you will be uh, able to efficiently write them and decide what is epic, what is the story, what is task. Don't have the epic definition here. You can do one thing. You can you need to add that. What is epic? What is the story? Uh, also, and task is also missing. What? How do you define a task? So you go to uh, uh, browser. Just type what is epic in uh, uh, Scrum, or you can go to Chat GPT also and type that. Okay. Go to Chat GPT. You have to log in. Now 
Log in with Google if you don't have that one. How do I define an epic in uh, Sierra? So let's let's uh, do operation of this uh, text. Okay. Let's try to understand this. Go up. 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 Let's understand this, right? So in Scrum, an epic is a large body work that can be broken down into smaller tasks of smaller stories. Epics are used to organize and manage work that is too big to be completed in a single iteration or screen. Here is how you can define an epic in Scrum, right? So basically, when any feature, project, or application or part of work is very big and it cannot be delivered in a single try or single iteration, that is the time we define it as an epic. Now, in your board, you have said that, you know, creating the microservice, installing it, that is an epic. Okay. In fact, it is not an epic, right? That could be on a story. The epic would be like, you can think as a mini feature or mini application, okay? Or a module of an application, which is a, which is big in nature and which cannot be completed in a single sprint, basically. It could be done in single sprint sometimes, but uh, mostly no. Could it be spring boots? Could it? Come again? Could it be spring boots? Could it? No, no, I didn't get it. Come again? Okay. I said um, microservice on its own. Can it be, can it be an epic? Yeah, microservice of a particular feature could be an epic. So for example, let's say you want to do user management. Okay. So user management could be one epic. Now under user management, there will be many features. For example, adding user, updating user, deleting users. Okay. Each one of them can be a separate story. Okay. Uh, UI development for them could be separate stories. Microservice developments could be stories. Deployment of them should maybe stories like that. So under so user management is a big functionality or a feature or a module, something like that. So that is called an epic. But under that, you will have several stories, as I explained. Does it make sense to you? Yes. So now you see size and scope, right? An epic yes. typically represents a significant amount of work that cannot be completed within a single sprint, right? If I say user management is an epic, user and management cannot be completed in a single sprint of two weeks because under this you have so many stories, right? So once you complete all those stories and those stories can be completed two stories, three stories like that in one one sprint and then in couple of sprints you will complete all the stories that time you say i have completed the uh, epic of user management so the size and scope is basically bigger in case of epic so that is why it is saying it is larger in scope than a user story always it will be larger than a story because epic is 
combination of multiple stories and then says it may span multiple sprints or even entire project lifetime so entire project could be one epic or it could be multiple sprints span to be multiple stories or multiple sprints right in each sprint i can deliver multiple stories so let's say i have one epic and in that epic i may have two stories five stories 10 stories any number of stories okay Okay. Now those let's say I have ten stories. So those ten stories I may split into three stories per. Yeah. There will be total five sprints. Okay. So once I complete five sprints and all the ten stories, then I can say my epic is completed. So your thought process or of epic or perception of epic should be like that. Now user value, right? So, like user stories, epic should ultimately deliver value to the end user or customer. They are focused on achieving specific objectives or outcomes that contribute to the overall goals of the project. So now, you think from a user point of view, what is an epic for a user, right? So let's say you have yeah. bank account. Inside bank account, you do so many operations. In one of them is user management, user account, your own profile, right? User profile. So user profile is an entirely separate functionality, and it is complete in itself. It is not dependent on other modules like, let's say, account transaction. So transaction management would be a different epic where you do. I you know amount transfer. You do debit. You do I you know uh, transfer from one account to another account, or you uh, basically create um, uh, ship the money to your fixed deposit or other thing. Okay. Now fixed deposit or deposits could be another epic. Fixed deposit itself is a very big thing. Then let's say statement. You generate a statement in different formats. Uh, in a PDF, in uh, Excel, then uh, you should be able to download them. You should be able to search the uh, transaction, uh, your statement records uh, between date range or based on years, something like that. So a statement could be an epic. You getting the bigger picture from a user point of view? Yes. Okay. So uh, if if we say a statement is an epic. Um, what user stories can come under statement is it that do you want to download in PDF? Do you want to download in um, Microsoft Word? Are those stories under statement? It could be one one story. So uh, downloading as a PDF could be one story because it involve involves multiple things. Just downloading is a, there is a UI work, there is backend work. There is a uh, work for storing that uh, PDF uh, somewhere in the uh, I know, storage. There are several activities around that. So only downloading uh, the statement in different formats would be an story. When downloading only in PDF could be one story, and in Excel another story because the PDF which you are downloading, uh, designing that PDF. Work is a big thing. The different they have a different uh, format of the PDF. How user friendly you or display, color combination, positioning, stable how it should look like, what are the information you are giving, address, uh, uh, so many other information, right? Structure of the statement, then uh, some uh, header, term, right? So there are a whole lot of things need to be done within a PDF statement. It is a big work, by which uh, you know first uh, product owner needs to tell what are the information should be there. Then uh, UX designer needs to design that how the PDF, a sample PDF should look like. Then based on that, uh, you know Java programmer will uh, write the code libraries and you know design that PDF. They will uh, they will might need to save the PDF in certain place. Then they have to send it as an 
email or allow it as a downloadable file UI team needs to give a link download it there might be some buttons and places to call the API to download the uh, PDF so there are a lot of work around that PDF so as a product owner your thought process should be very uh, you know uh, big like from a user point of view what all different activities can be done on that particular function yeah now let's say high level description so each epic should have a clear high level description that provides an overview of what it entails this description helps stakeholders and the development team understand the purpose and context of the epic okay. so the epic will have a very generic description okay not in very very detail but in high level description by looking at that someone is, will be able to know what is the you know uh, entire functionality about so when i say statement right so whatever we discuss related to statement whatever we can do those things in briefly in a short and sweet statement we should put in the description so that when someone reads the epic they can know uh, in high level what is the you know uh, you know epic around the statement or related to user management let's say yeah you there i'm there i'm listening so the next one is dependencies right come down yeah. but epics may have dependencies on other epics or stories as well as external dependencies such as third party services or infrastructure requirements identifying and managing these dependencies in crucial and effective planning and execution right so you have to understand the dependencies so what are the dependencies for a, uh, a statement tell me In a statement epic what are the dependencies you have the before statement can be implemented your transaction management has to be implemented first because only when transactions are done then only you will have records in the history and a statement is nothing but the historical records Okay, so yeah. transaction management will be your dependency. Dependence. Before transaction management, even user management is a dependency. User management means user account has to be created, user has to be validated, right? It's uh, it will uh, be set up with all its permissions and all. So user management is also a dependency for a statement. then comes acceptance criteria although epics are high level it is still important to define acceptance criteria that outline that uh, what needs to be achieved for the epic to be considered complete these criteria help ensure that the team and the stakeholders have a shared understanding of the expected outcome so when you accept that the user management is completed so basically you need to have a high level acceptance criteria and what are they like you know you can say uh, users details are entered okay uh, user details can be viewed okay user can update its mobile number user can change its password user can uh, change its pin number so like that so many all uh, core features that could be there in the uh, acceptance criteria in high level so that when you mark the epic as completed right yeah. you need to verify that these all high level features are available there. yeah destination of done yeah. yeah before you make it as done okay 
then you have breakdown into user stories once epic is identified it should be broken down into smaller and more manageable user stories that can be uh, can you uh, move the arrow little bit down okay. that can be implemented within individual scripts this breakdown allows for incremental delivery and facilitates prioritization based on the business value so that you would understand right so the ip whatever uh, you know other activities need to be done which can be delivered independently they are the stories and you have to break them then you have to do the prioritization so epic should be prioritized based on their importance and value to the project so product owner and the stakeholders can use techniques such as uh, 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 mosco prioritization or value based prioritization to determine the order in which epics are baked so for example i said a statement is dependent on transactions and transactions are dependent on user man right so they statement cannot be done with the, without the transaction management and the user man so those are dependent so what should be the order of implementation or prioritization first user management needs to be implemented at least the core feature of user management after that core features of transaction after that statement can be implemented so that is why the prioritization is very important clear yeah? then you have the refinement and iteration right so uh on weekly basis or uh, you know uh, by weekly basis we always need to review the epics uh, and then we have to do the refinement and uh, iteration accordingly the epics may be involved over time as more information becomes available or as the project progresses it's important it is important to regularly refine and revisit epics to ensure they remain relevant and aligned with project goals so this point is very very important and this uh, you have to set up refinement meeting okay where constantly you will be changing or updating the stories or the epics okay to improve the features because first time when we create the epics it could be one liner epic because we don't have enough information what needs to be built but after another two meetings or another one sprint we, you will have more information and more visibility so that time you have put all the details there after another two three sprints you will see you have more visibility and you can either change the existing one or you can add more to it so you have to add those details again so this process is continuous that is why agile gives you the flexibility to change the feature and improve them constantly or continuously which is not possible in other models and you always can make something better only when you have done one level of implementation when you have done one level of implementation then you will see what is good what is bad you do the demo and take the feedback input based on that you can plan how you can make it better for the next yeah. by defining epics in this way teams can effectively manage large scale work while uh, maintaining flexibility and adaptability within the scrum so in this way basically you can work very effectively with the team and manage your entire work so for example none of the big projects can be done in a small period and by a small group of people and by a same set of people same set of people for example let's say you are uh, making a big uh, you know bridge over a river okay and that work may take one year of time during that one year of time you have to do so many different activities to complete that starting from the requirement inspection of the location depth of the river the flow of the stream of the water right uh, materials which you need 
right? Engineering uh, diagram and uh, people who will be doing all different areas, right? So all hundreds of works need to be planned out. And every week, every day or every month, you have to constantly review your work and you have to make improvement to that. And then uh, work also will be in process. Your requirement also will be refined. Your, uh, you know, all different activities will be refined. Your resources of people who will be working on the project, they also will be, you know, audited and you will always try to put better people and people who will not perform well, you will have to remove those people from the team. So these are all activities continuously happen. And uh, Agile provides you the framework to do all those activities very flexibly. So yes, that is about uh, Any question? No question. All right. So uh, the next step is try to discuss again with uh, your uh, team member and see what are the epics come back. And you show it to me. I will review it again and then I will guide you as to the epics and so Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah.